It, you know, it, this is great to, to be uh, with my wife and have some of my family here. You know, about a, a little over a year ago, uh, we came to this building. Um, it was snowing, uh, and it was a little darker out. Uh, and we started what has been one fantastic journey over the last 13 months. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, you know, I, I had the occasion to visit so many places and spend time with so many people. The reality of Connecticut is that we are a great state with great people who for many years has suffered under leadership that has failed to understand their needs. When you have the highest electric rates in the nation, it's necessary to do something about it. When you're one of only two states that has failed to grow jobs over a 20-year period of time, it is simply unacceptable. When your public housing is in distress and no one steps forward to rebuild it, it's time for a change. And in so many issues, time and time and time again, we have failed the people of Connecticut. That's why, today, I filed the papers to be a candidate for governor of the state of Connecticut. Thank you. You know, in so many ways, in so many ways, being the governor of the state of Connecticut is a little bit like being the mayor of a major United States city. A city, a city that grew its population, a city that grew jobs, a city that built housing, uh, built housing, a city that rebuilt its public housing, a city that invested in its future for future generations' prosperity. It's time that we have that kind of leadership uh, in that building over there. It's time for a change. There are those who travel this state and say that they want to run government like a business. Please understand, I want to run Connecticut's government like a great government that meets our needs, that uh, gives opportunity universally, that actually understands the aspirations of the people of Connecticut. I know from the almost countless conversations I've had across this state over the last 13 months, that the people of Connecticut are ready for change, expecting change. Quite frankly, they are demanding change, and we're going to give it to them. I also want to say of these great people who stand behind me, and. Uh, representatives and senators who aspire to do that which we know we can do as a Democratic Party. Because after all, this begins as a democratic process, looking first to a convention, then perhaps to a primary, ultimately standing uh, uh, on the same stage as a Republican candidate, and finally in a November election. Let me tell you this. We are going to win this race. I could not uh, stand before you this day and not reflect on how blessed my life has been. My mother and father were hard-working people. My dad sold insurance for a living. My mother was a public health nurse and a school nurse. And yes, I'm the eighth child and seventh son of Bill and Agnes Malloy. When I was born, people didn't think I would be a success. I had some learning disabilities, <coughs> excuse me, and physical disabilities, and it took me years to overcome them. But in overcoming them, I, I found friends and allies and compensated, and I built a strength that I believe will allow me to be the kind of leader that Connecticut needs. After all, Connecticut has to overcome some of its own problems. And I'm ready to lead, and I am so grateful, 
so grateful to all of you who've come out here and said hello and been part of the effort over the last 13 months and prepared to be a part of the effort over the next few months. Just remember, when we win, we change Connecticut forever. God bless you all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Genevieve, how are you? Good, good, good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great to be with you. Thank you. Is that all right? Thank you. Thank you very much. You guys have some questions, I hear. Tell us why it took so long to make it official. Well, it did, didn't take so long. When I, when I came here, I said I was going to visit as many of the towns and, uh, and main streets that I possibly could. I, I completed that conver conversation recently. It was time to get going, and, and I feel great about it. I also wanted some sun, so it was, uh, it was appropriate to get to spring. A lot more people have entered the race since uh, you finally officially announced today. Are you concerned about that? Actually, a lot of people left the race since, I, uh, since last year. I, you know, uh, yeah, let's, let's that's contrary. And, and, you know, I, listen, there's a great field, and, and I, I feel, you know, really, uh, really very good about our chances. Last time you came in second uh, in terms of the nomination, uh, what are you going to do differently to make sure that doesn't happen again? Well, you know, I, I, you know these, each race stands on, it, on its own merits. Uh, we have a different time. Uh, uh, people are quite desperate. Uh, we have a 9% um, unemployment rate. We're not getting any federal gr grants. We can't even fill out the grant paper to get grants. Um, uh, we know that we've lost jobs, one of only two states that have lost jobs over the last 20 years. But you know what's different about this race is people want a proven leader, somebody who knows how to move government and make it work for people, and I'm prepared to do that. What the about rhetoric seems to be heating up a little bit between you and Mr. Lamar. I spoke with him a few months ago, and he had said that basically people have been running for government for a very long time alluding to you and that he is an outsider which is why he thinks he would be a better governor what would be your response to that? listen for 14 years I was mayor of a city uh, we built housing added jobs added population built infrastructure for the future I will take my credentials for the office of governor and and gladly to compare them to anyone else's I love government we're gonna make Connecticut's government work for people I'm prepared to do that uh, other people will decide who to, who to, who to yeah, back but may, I'm gonna win that you may be outspent uh, you may be outspent uh, by a wide margin during the course of this campaign how do you combat that not only if there's a primary but also on going through November if you're the nominee a wealth of ideas a wealth of experience and quite frankly enough money to get our message across uh, is all available to me you know people are are going to make their own own decisions but I think when they scratch the surface and understand what I'm talking about and presenting real plans by the way when, when you're done you should all go back and, and take a look at uh, our website we're up with a plan uh, you might want to read that uh, we certainly are inviting people uh, from across the state of Connecticut to uh, uh, to read it but it really is about a wealth of, of ideas ideas of experience and a little heart too. To be raised to qualify for the uh, public financing campaign. You know, I don't know the the exact number. The reality is we will qualify uh, and uh, and we'll have enough money to get our message across, and and that's all that's really important. You're only about halfway there. Is that the you know, case? I, I, honestly, I don't know what the number is, but I'm sure somebody on the staff can get it. But we've raised a lot of money, uh, and uh, and I'm quite frankly not not worried about uh, uh, meeting that threshold. Um, and uh, we're, we're going to have more than enough money to get our ideas across. If the problem is leadership. How come the public in every poll we've seen for months and years doesn't seem to be hanging the failures of Connecticut on the government? You know, I, I, don't, I don't know how to explain that phenomenon, but I can tell you from uh, going from place to place across the state and actually walking the streets the other day of New London with you uh, that people are anxious. When, when we have the highest unemployment rate since 1976 in this state, when we fail to receive any of the hundreds of millions of dollars being awarded to, uh, uh, actually billions of dollars being awarded to, to states, uh, people know that something's wrong. Uh, we're going to have a new governor, and I'm predicting it's going to be me. Hey, Mayor, are you in a position to uh, call for a series of uh, Democratic gubernatorial debates here in the run-up to the convention? I would love to. You know that I would love debates. I would love to. to I, I, well, first of all, I think I, we have a couple of forums tonight, actually. Um, uh, every opportunity uh, that, that, that I could have to stand uh, on the same stage as, as other candidates for governor is a, is a good day for me. Uh, I want to have the, that exchange of ideas. I certainly want people to know uh, what we're talking about, um, and, and so that would be a great, great idea. I do want to have as many debates as, as humanly possible. Course, you know, the other 
other day I gave seven speeches in a single day. I'll do seven debates if you want. Just going back to that outsider question, there are a lot of people this year campaigning and saying, what well, we don't need career politicians, whether they're mayors or governors. What you need is somebody new and fresh to politics. There are going to be several candidates like that in this race. Specifically, how do you counter that argument that an outsider might bring a, a better perspective to being governor? Well, for most point. of our relationship, you've called me an outsider. The reality is, that no, I haven't. I, I haven't served. I haven't served in in that building before, uh, and I bring a, uh, a a number of new and fresh approaches to uh, governance uh, in the state of uh, uh, Connecticut. Uh, the reality is, is that I'm prepared to make the kinds of changes that have to be made in the state of Connecticut, so that we can uh, live within our means, so that we can start to build jobs, so that we can start to move this state forward again. That, after all, is what people want. There's always a danger for any candidate to get too specific on cuts, particularly this far out. But at what point in the cycle um, do you put some uh, some meat on that statement about living within our means? Well, I think what you'll find uh, on our on our website uh, is that we do stake out some territory. Uh, the modernization of government, the combination of uh, uh, of uh, institutions and and uh, 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 parts of government is going to be an important important role of what we do. Uh, it also has to we also have to understand that there are a lot of people who work for the state, so they have to be honored and respected in the process of creating a new state government. So we'll we'll put a lot of skin on those bones in the in the coming weeks but I think if you take a look at the site you'll see what we're talking about if, if I'm a member of a state employees union should I expect to have a Malay administration raise the idea of give backs in some way to get to that goal of living within our means I, I think what you should expect as a state employee is that you'll have a governor who will treat you with respect who will invite you to the uh, table uh, will exchange ideas one of the things that I, I have said so let me and many of you haven't heard me say this so let me say this before there are people uh, in the state employee uh, arena representing those great state employees uh, who I embrace and love so much that represent them and have been walking around with lists of cuts and changes in state government that they say would save the state hundreds of millions of dollars. My first job as governor is to examine every one of those and either explain to you why you're wrong about that idea or implement that idea. It's a total mind change in how we're going to work in that against government. Do involve the lowering the size of the state's workforce? You, you know what? what, what the creation of efficiencies do is, is to allow you to, 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 to compensate for the size of government, to do that which is necessary so that we live within our, our means. I know, you know, everybody here with a, I'm sorry, I keep hitting you, uh, a microphone knows that, that we, are cha we are facing very serious problems and that a lot of the problems that exist have basically been punted from this administration to the next. We're going to take care of those problems. That's why I'm running for governor. And I can say that. Right, I can say that. I'm running for governor. This is the first day. If the deficits continue, what uh, taxes would you raise? You know, I, I, there'll, there'll be more than enough time to talk about uh, uh, what we have to do. But I will tell you this, that we're going to examine every one of those tax expenditures. Uh, I said four years ago when I last ran for governor that, in my opinion, every tax expenditure should have to be voted up or down uh, by the legislature on a regular basis with a recommendation for, from the governor and an explanation of how many jobs they create. That's if, if, if I'm lucky enough to be governor, I promise you that's what we'll be doing. It's great to be with you. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, 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 hey